thanks for coming. Do you know if um, Dr. Uh, members of Dr. Rasulian group are going to be here? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I'll send a message. Which what, what is there? Yes, I recommend take. So, um, if you have not, uh, observed the slides that I shared, um, they will quite be like uh, 35 megabytes, but most of it are useless. The uh, most important part is uh, what I'm distributing now. The rest is uh, just uh, fluff. So it is from uh, Minneapolis? Yes. So it was inches, not feet. Yeah, I think it was actually millimeter measurements. Yeah, there was, a, there was another attachment on that. 100, 100 millimeters long by about a week. There was another attachment on that. So the next challenge yeah. is to uh, pull it over this. Pull it over this. And there is a one more piece. So um, Gage and uh, Ben are certified experts in the subject of today's uh, meeting because they were they did attend it about half a year ago. So it is uh, I'm following a template from the goal that you are going to pursue. You need to do something that I do not know how to do. So you need to uh, jump up and uh, show high performance. You need to write. And um, you cannot take me as an example, neither in writing nor in public uh, speech. And although I'm not uh, very skilled in this, I'll try to share some general notes uh, that will help uh, all of you to succeed in the rest of the course. So. There is a you have um, already obtained sufficient amount of uh, skills in uh, theory. So you've got uh, enough skills in uh, theoretical background of methods, and uh, last time maybe it was uh, a little intense, but I hope to share uh, last lecture in, in recordings. And uh, as you see from this diagram that you may get uh, tired of uh, watching each time at the beginning of the meeting, that uh, we on lectures we are covering theoretical background. Uh, then on uh, first uh, part of practical skills you were building models and most of the time you were uh, running right uh, software and right hardware and um, you are in the process of computing observables right? eventually maybe comparing with some uh, exper experiments or your intuitive expectations and there is a one part is that um, we didn't cover much. You, you did it partially when you were presenting skills, but uh, part the reason for all 
activities that we did here. The reason of all the theories and practical skills are research activity, which you may need in your uh, careers. But research activity cannot uh, exist in isolation from other people and uh, just by nature of uh, human society and, and scientific activity it includes uh, scientific communications. So this is a separate skill that uh, needs to be added uh, to uh, theoretical background and practical achievements in your research projects. And um, this part is not connected to this course, it's very generic and maybe you already got your excellence in this activity before. Uh, some of you are already research active, some of you have uh, uh, peer review competitive publications and went through this procedure, but we need to stay on the same uh, grounds and uh, um, get to the level where we can uh, bring your mini research project on the orbit comparable to true life where it is brought for review for professional uh, experts. Ah, sorry, get better attendance. This is a summary. If you look on it, you do not need to listen to me. Although you're welcome to. I will. Yeah, thank you. So, I, it, yes? I'm sorry, I have a question. What is we mean by radio wave times? Uh, Einstein conditions. Okay. As soon as you know the value of oscillator strengths, you can immediately compute uh, tau, the Einstein coefficients, coefficients for spontaneous emission. Okay. And if you need a specific uh, code for it, I'd be happy to share. Um, by some, like this, this class this year gets uh, very successful, but by some objective reason, maybe because you are putting all the role uh, focus on, on each. Um, Subject we study, we, we didn't get over too much of practical skills because we, we are trying to perfect each, each one. Um, so we are doing uh, analysis of um, huh? summarizing data and uh, organizing uh, results in, in form of uh, written report. So you're doing projects. This one is by me. I, I didn't have uh, time to uh, complete this little graphical summary of everything you do, but um, I had intention to go over your directors and summary. So the projects that you're doing range from photo-induced uh, depolymerization to uh, PN junctions, so which uh, makes connection to photovoltaics. Then uh, there are um, high temperature chemical transformations, combustion. Uh, there are um, properties of specific uh, polymers, both electronic and mechanical. There are um, interface between organic and inorganic materials and uh, the author of this work here is the gold medal in all the skills of passion holder right. can you pass it to, to Nas as well so um, I just pulled this thing from the director of uh, author of this project, who is in green color today, <laughs> and who is carefully studying the studying materials. And uh, he may see the uh, recordings that interestingly, remember we, we did, we went over uh, spin polarized electronic calculations, and the orbital with the same number may have a drastically different. Uh, uh, character, localization, and, and symmetry for uh, spin alpha and spin beta. So it, it, it can be so radically drastically than for localized in different parts of the uh, material, and which is uh, uh, something non, non negligible. Is that a bipyridine group I see attached? Yes, it is. Is that ruthenium? Yes. 
that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a um, it was democratic uh, procedure of selecting what you I know, I know. I'm just teasing. It wasn't real. I mean, it was. I I did put that on my quantum dots, but. Uh. <laughs> but it, it, it's it's a very challenging system. Anyone who takes it is very brave. Um, there is a project on web Telluride uh, nanowires, and then uh, uh, this uh, you already got the printout. And uh, web nanowires in, in the interface with uh, metal contact for thermal electrics. Also, uh, there are projects that focus on. Uh, more electronic rather than chemical properties and localization of charges for the emission. And uh, some, uh, I need to regroup it, like chemistry to chemistry, like what gauges do, it should go together with this one. And uh, um, the chemical reactions introduced by heat. And those are summaries from previous years. So I will mumble. Word of disorganized, unnecessary information. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking in a sober way at the things that I'm doing. <laughs> um, you need to, to do much better because uh, I have luxury to speak uh, intellectual garbage for two hours, and you need to, to give condensed presentation in, in five minutes. And for writing, uh, you should keep the figure of uh, like four pages. Including pages? No, no. Oh, you will, some of you may think, oh, four pages, so much. But uh, as you start writing, you, I, I promise, there will be maybe one out of 11 uh, papers that will be four or less. Most of you will uh, blow the uh, size of the papers to like 10. People with a chemistry background. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's it's it's, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you will need to keep yourself in in the in the bounds. Oh, yeah. it, it, it is not uh, it is not easy. So um, although I am admitting that some things that I'm going to present are disorganized, you need to with this disorganized talk. I want to inspire you to be very organized in what you're you're writing okay. and uh, there will be some items that may eventually help you to uh, excel in, in this activity so there will be several segments of uh, what i'm showing there will be a segment of on research procedures that we uh, covered before there will be a segment on uh, organizing of data in figures and tables what you're already doing, especially those who uh, successfully completed uh, the last homework, which was like number nine. And um, there will be two more sections. Section how to organize the data that have be already been organized in a human story how to explain it with the human language in a way that someone else can read it. Uh, some of you are very talented and can do it naturally. Uh, some people, like myself, finding it a problem in, in their life. So I'll provide some little algorithm how to uh, explain what you're doing in, uh, for research in writing. And the fourth part will be heads up uh, of the reviewing uh, procedure. So. I'm not going to keep in trip when uh, you will come after the weekend on Tuesday. I'm asking everyone to bring uh, printed copies of your written reports, like four pages of text plus whatever figures, right? Three copies. And why three if I'm the one, the one instructor? Because there will be a reviewing procedure in a random way. Uh, each of you will serve as reviewers of someone else in the class. And uh, your reviews will be counted uh, towards um, success in the course. So I'm going to disclose uh, what will be the criteria for uh, grading. Criteria that I will use for grading of your written reports and criteria uh, that those of you who will play a role of reviewers 
will apply towards other works. And uh, through understanding of this procedure, you may um, develop an idea how to organize your, your writing effort. So if you, if you know what is uh, required, you can intentionally put right things and skip wrong things. And uh, I'll, I'll give you a heads up when to focus and when there will be something important. And when it is uh, non-important things, uh, you can keep Just relaxing. A question. Please. So you said by Tuesday we should submit a full... Uh, Final report. Final. Final written report. Make sure. Oh. So you uh, may hate or you hopefully love this figure, but you, you are acquainted with it, right? So uh, one of the uh, idea <laughs> is that we explore how the uh, properties, electronic properties of material respond to uh, change of the geometry by uh, molecular dynamics, right? And um, it, this is not ideal, but it is one of the possible uh, general uh, ways to organize, uh, organize research in a short time. This table doesn't want to be skipped. And um, we need to design some format how to present the data that uh, you have. Um, here, oh, I, I brought only one example, by, but I can send them by uh, emails. It is uh, one of the papers uh, uh, that grown out of a seed of uh, course projects in the past. And uh, there are two copies you, you can circulate. And <coughs> I, I don't have enough copies to do it with you, but if someone wants, uh, it, it is fine. These are actual published papers from this class? Well, I will not lie. After completing class project, there were additional steps of uh, improving both uh, results and, and writing, but without class, it would be not possible. Class is like substantial core of the publication. Okay. Um, and um, here is an example of uh, figure whatever, number two. So if you scroll through, it, it shows um, how data can be organized. So this is one of the figures. And um, this year, this um, figure is closest to um, near and dear to the heart of Nathan, because the subject of, of this paper is uh, P and dog silicon, same as, as he's doing, but with uh, some different geometry. So um, this is response of a model to presence or absence of uh, doping and to thermalization. So um, we do not, I do not have intentions and we do not have time to go over all the things. You do a much better science you, yourself, but the way that you can have several examples of the same type of uh, results, uh, such as density of states, for different configurations, without doping and with doping, or um, with doping at zero Kelvin, and after you do thermalization. So you do see that uh, evidently thermalization can uh, screw up or improve uh, electronic structure substantially. And uh, be excited, it is what Mead is doing, right? Exposing, removing a little bit from uh, valence band and putting a little bit to conduction band. So, another little comment is that some projects, and uh, what I'm doing is uh, very hard to, to make pleasant and direct the applicable to each project, but uh, s some of you will see sim similarities and correlations with uh, what is being discussed. So, some projects uh, can be symbolically, some models that you, you explore can be symbolically 
um, split onto hybrid systems that compose of part A and part B that are being brought together. Right? And A and B can be very different in each project. And um, then um, it is very, very standard situation. And uh, there are standard moves, standard ways how to describe it. For example, one can look on the characteristics of system A and characteristics of system B, for example, density of states. Then look on density of states of system A and B together and see how much their um, property of the combined system can be expanded uh, as literal addition of the properties of system A and system B. Even simpler than this, binding energy. So some uh, people um, earning, how to say, salaries. Six figures. Huh? <laughs> Six figures. No, just, just surviving, just surviving. Uh, but uh, one can uh, professionally survive without going too far and too deep into computational details. Like, uh, you can uh, uh, look onto a lot of experimental situations, a lot of experimental like molecules and materials, and uh, support them, or maybe offend them, uh, through computation, by uh, checking if the experimental measurements are right or wrong. So it is a very standard thing if uh, two objects, A and B, merge together, if they want to merge or, or not. So so-called binding energy. And this is probably the most basic thing one can do. So uh, compute total energy of the combined hybrid system, uh, total energy of the system A and system B, and see how far summation of total energy of A and total energy of B uh, is offset from total energy of the combined system. So if you do it again and again for different systems, different methods, uh, it is uh, sufficient, to, not for six figures, but for surviving. Uh, you do not, so you do not need all information that you get got in the course to do it. So if you identify that your system can be um, expanded onto such sections, you may decide to add analysis of binding energy. There is no general template for, for data. Uh, I'm trying to do it each year and I'm failing because each project is very individual. But you can try to look over like ground, uh, excited before and after molecular dynamics, hybrid or standalone sections and then do some numbers for them if you find it useful. Um, I already how to say, confessed that what I'm presenting now is disorganized, and it is. Um, only by the end of today's meeting, I will touch the most important question. The question of goals and expected outcomes of your paper. So uh, a lot of um, researchers get really excited with technical aspects. Like, uh, I love to draw orbital and I do, don't care who needs them because I am getting like, in, uh, emotionally rewarded. But it, is, uh, it, is, it can be pleasant personally, but it is not right uh, general attitude. If you try to uh, communicate results of your research, you need to um, clear understanding what is the goal and what you need to address. And, who needs them. and I'm going to touch this thing that should probably go at the very beginning. As the, as, the, as the last thing of, of today's meeting. But uh, why I'm mentioning it, because if you are trying to organize your data, build tables, uh, the criterion of doing or not doing some steps is understanding of your research goals. And for each of you, uh, you are dealing with natural sciences education and, and some of you with re uh, research wrong time. Your, uh, general uh, intelligence, intelligence experience and, and knowledge should be 
way more than enough uh, to realize the goals, post them, and then compare each step you're doing in your mini research project versus goal, either real or unreal. But you should crystallize and formulate which goal you're pursuing. Okay. Again, um, it is objectively hard to organize data. We all can do geometry, movement, density of state, spectra, orbitals. But those characteristics can be done for neutral in ground state, for anions, cations, for excitations, and for uh, singlets, triplets, for the uh, magnetic modifications of electronic configuration. And then uh, one can do it again for systems that has been perturbed by, by the heat. So even if we are not posing a lot of ambitious plans, it is a big variety of data that you have already generated or uh, can generate in, at a no time. Those, um, if your system is small enough and you're submitting to debug queue, you're getting the results within like an half an hour. hour. Um, so one needs a compass, one needs a, um, a realization of a main goal that you're trying to pursue as a navigation for selecting one or another numerical experiment and for reporting this numerical experiment in your in report and for including or not including specific data. This is the creative part of your research project that uh, no one can instruct you. So it's, uh, this is the main, main challenge in uh, the course, in the project, and in the generally in, in academic life. Yeah, we already covered it. In case your system can be chopped onto segments A and B, one can always find binding energy. One can draw density of states of uh, chopped pieces and overall pieces one after another and see if they look approximately the same. One can, uh, if the system can be chopped, one can look on the absorption spectra of the uh, independent uh, items and then combine system and see if they look as the um, summation or bringing items closer to each other substantially perturbs their original structure. Also, Some people do not find anything valuable in orbitals. Some people hate orbitals, and some people love orbitals, uh, because they, they are tool to understand uh, the localization and delocalization of orbitals, charge transfer, and some magnetic properties. But uh, we already discussed the question about the selecting a couple of few orbitals out of a large amount that would be most helpful. What are the criteria? Of course, one can convert three-dimensional objects into one-dimensional, plot all of them, maybe not in paper, not in file, but for, for yourself, and uh, make a mark on a paper which ones look most interesting, and then plot, right? Those that give better charge transfer, better localization, better delocalization, or better um, follow, they, they follow in the best way the progression of particle in the box. It's one of the criteria. Um, which other criteria for selecting orbitals uh, one can do? Uh, one can glance into oscillator strengths file and select those pairs of orbitals that give uh, largest oscillator strengths. So it is one of the features. If the if pairs of orbitals contribute at most to ability of molecule to uh, absorb energy in form of electromagnetic radiations, probably there is something special about these two orbitals and their worth of uh, plotting and, and analyzing. Again, a little disclaimer. Um, right now, you are shopping. I'm throwing in um, a lot of disorganized ideas and you need to identify for yourself which of these ideas you are to buy and put into your written reports. 
what uh, will be shown here is a little excessive. Uh, it, it's not possible to take all ideas and put them in one report. And uh, uh, through your intelligent creative activity, you develop your uh, intellectual compass and your ideas which um, data and which approaches, which intellectual steps are more appropriate for the project and which can be rejected or postponed for, for, for the future. But not confident. Four, five, and uh, who didn't vote? <laughs> okay. So um, there is a very basic idea that was exploited uh, fruitfully in chemistry. Um, um, you all have heard about like Boltzmann distribution. If energy provided is bigger than some uh, threshold, then process is enabled, if less, it is not. And this idea is behind a lot of chemistry. If uh, we are looking on the process of um, completing <coughs> reaction, when uh, often has a activation energy that one needs to overcome. And if the um, activation energy is uh, smaller than room temperature, reaction will be enabled. If uh, if uh, activation energy is higher, it will be disabled. Or we can go in the other way. Uh, if you have fixed activation energy, we can scan different values of temperature. Amos was planning to scan only three values of temperature. But one can go over like 20, if needed. Uh, see uh, how system responds to different values of temperature and whether it will uh, create some drastical changes. Not all of us are doing projects related to chemistry. But what I can promise, each model has, has bonds between ions. And in this sense, each model has a little of chemistry. And each model, if heated to substantial amount of temperature, will experience bond breaking. I'm not telling that you immediately need to do it, but anything we do will uh, evaporate to a plasma if you give it 20,000 Kelvin temperature, right? And in this sense, uh, concept of activation energy is applicable to any project we do. So you can, uh, one of the <coughs> of computational chemistry that you can do explosion without damage, uh, any, uh, danger to a person who does this experiment. Isn't that the fun part, though? Huh? Isn't that the fun part, though? It is. It is. I always um, intend, but forget because the semester uh, rounds up so quickly. Um, one should do more explosives as a project, so like uh, known and maybe unknown. Um, initial conditions. This year, we went through standard setting up of initial conditions just uh, but um, temperature is set is set up by um, second part of a quant car file where three cartesian projections of momentum px py and pz are set up uh, if you are, we are doing heating procedure and all of us are doing that it is uh, set up by uh, internal proce procedure in uh, wasp but no one forbids to manually set up uh, momentum on uh, any selected atom or group of atoms. So 
uh, we are not doing it this year, but one can intentionally make group of atoms to move in a certain direction and collide in a certain way. Um, so which data we may have? Geometry, total energy, gap, binding energy, density, state, spectra, orbitals. Uh, well, temperature as function of time is not observable, but it, for some, if there is a combustion reaction, and we do, this year we have only one combustion, right? By gauge. Um, we, you all know this uh, little trick, how to do grep, T equals, out of the OZ car to follow the temperature. So when we heat system or do molecular dynamics, it does, Temperature uh, does fluctuations around the value that we need. If system is big and we carefully heat it up, thermalize, then fluctuations are small. If system is small or we didn't ramp it up long enough, it will be big fluctuations. But in average, temperature will be constant. Because uh, Sudipta knows the right keywords for this. NVT. NVT. So T, constant. Yes. Sorry. Number of atoms, uh, constant. Volume is constant, temperature is constant. But if you do NVT for combustion reactions, for exothermic reaction, overall temperature will start growing because energy is released and it, it gets hotter and hotter. So uh, um, if Cage did this exper experiment, he may witness that it happens or doesn't happen. If he didn't, it is one of the interesting things to check. And we all may check it. So if you see the temperature increases with time, it can be not an error of a code, but a witness that there is an exothermic reaction. And opposite, if you see the temperature goes down, it could be endothermic reaction. Basically, what happens to the samples? Like, the chains we have, the temperatures just by looking at you can like you, you can uh, again same as with orbitals a lot of people love movies but some people hate and some do not care because it's a lot of graphical information that is uh, for some people looks excessive but if you uh, convert complicated molecular dynamics data into just one line as temperature as function of time it is easier to analyze and make some conclusions. Uh, typically, if you look on temperature as a function of time first and then go back into movie, if you saw the temperature changes drastically, likely the bonds are broken or formed. If you are looking on uh, gentle exploration in, in mild uh, range of conditions, it shouldn't happen. But if you are looking for combustible, uh, energetic materials, it's likely to happen. No. Energies of orbitals as a function of time. We didn't cover it. If there will be time at the last lab, and we cover it as, as a bonus. Okay, organizing data. All very challenging and all very individual. So it is. One of the handouts that you have uh, received, and it is very, very similar to uh, homework number nine, right? So do not take number of figures and sequence of figures as a must. It's only a suggestion, because for each of the individual projects, uh, you may need one figure and do not need another. But general idea is that there is a set of Observable, and uh, you have a set of either modifications of your model, or you can decompose your model on uh, chop fragments. Like a, and uh, the general way that you can uh, practice for for your model is like uh, show geometry, chop fragment A, chop B, and uh, together. And you can also show the model after certain steps of molecular dynamics, when it can be either broken into pieces or corrugated or just kept in time. Right? 
just last snapshot of the molecular dynamics because if, if you show all, it will be 100 pages. Um, density of states can be organized as in this uh, example that uh, browsing around, yes? So another idea, well, it, it is a very basic and a simple idea and you probably all practice in it. The word figure doesn't need immediately single image. It is very standard practice to uh, jam like four or six figures, four or six images into one figure and call them panels and then compare them. Uh, because otherwise you do one image, call it a figure, and then your very basic uh, research will include like 30 figures that is not possible for st standard journals. Some journals uh, charge authors for figures and you just physically not able to pay for more than like six because it's um, it's nothing to print a couple of copies but if, if there is a like, couple of thousand the publisher is concerned about having uh, information condensed um, density of states uh, some of you may have magnetic unrest unrestricted I, uh, or maybe changing number of electrons or maybe changing n up down I do not remember if anyone specifically does end up down right now, but um, Ben and Gage could be interested in doing it. It could be beneficial for, the, for their projects. If um, nothing is mandatory, but it is it, like beneficial. Anyone else does transition metals with unpaired electrons? Your number of electrons is not number of electrons in your model is even. number of electrons yes 960 okay good so you never get what never get what ne neither one variation of your model has odd number of electrons good so you only do this if you have metals number three figures. or you have reactive radicals okay if uh, um, one of the Okay, it's a little story that can be boring to any, anyone else except the person who asked the question. Suppose you have molecular dynamics, and suppose before you started, you included the um, keyword I spin equals 2, which means you run molecular dynamics with uh, spin tracking enabled. Okay. Then output of the OZ car will include not only temperature, kinetic energy, potential energy, but it will include one more uh, column at the end, magnetization, which is basically the number of unpaired spins. Okay. And if uh, the system is boring, if it is like a signal all, on, all the time, magnetization will be zero. But if there is a spontaneous magnetization appearance or spontaneous disappearance of magnetization, this uh, number may change with time. Or, there is one more scenario. If your model develops intermediate reactive radicals, magnetization can ramp up also to some sort of value different from zero. Right? Mm -hmm. And um, if uh, your model has too many molecules and atoms in, and it is hard to watch it by human eyes mm -hmm. and you need some objective measurements you can look on this magnetization and see instant of time when it deviates from zero and then specifically look on this, on, on this uh, snapshot of molecular dynamics to see if reactive radicals are popping up spectra spectra for like a, D, before, after, um, orbitals, often very useful. Snapshots of molecular dynamics are needed if you know for sure that uh, there are chemical transformations, or if you are interested in uh, uh, change of the hydral angle like, uh, of, of the polymer, like Anderson is doing. So you may 
show a couple of snapshots to see, to illustrate what, what is going on. And total energy as a function of time, if you have suspicion that your uh, system participates in some uh, reactions, actual reactions, won't break an information. So, um, some of you have already completed most of it. If you were carefully doing all steps of homework night, then you basically have the structure, but you may add couple of more panels, like add a panel uh, of what happens to your observable after thermalization. Okay? And this is not mandatory. Some of you may want to put more figures, most of you may want to have less figures, which is fine. We will uh, chat about goals before, before the end of the, of the meeting. Okay, uh, who has never seen this figure before? Okay, then it's not a waste of, of my time. Who has seen this figure before? Okay. <laughs> would, you, would you like to explain? Do you really want me to? <laughs> okay, please try. Come, come here and, and, and explain. Because last time you already helped to pronounce Latin, mm -hmm. now you, you go to more advanced stage. Okay. So this just kind of explains the relationships of various pieces in science and about how science eventually goes to help citizens <laughs> with fun in science. So, like, science can lead to things like patents and publications, which lead, which help promote industry, and can also produce teachers and in a workforce. Teachers lead to education, and industry leads to energy, gadgets, health security, which are all things that benefit us as citizens. And as citizens, we pay taxes to the federal government. And the federal government gives grants to people like us who do research to do science. So it's all a vicious cycle, as it were. The circle of science. Yes, the circle of science. So what is the connection of this diagram and your explanation, which, is, which was really great, to the written reports? Well, if we can't explain why it benefits the citizens, then why should the government pay for it? Okay, yeah, many thanks. Great, great job. Yeah, yeah, let's <laughs> talk. So, um, uh, when you will be, suppose that you have already created all the figures, which uh, or those figures that you consider important, and you are coming to actual writing, which typically happens. But some people are doing very strategically. I, it, it is ideally should be the following way. First, you look on uh, open problems on uh, what can you do uh, as a final product, and then you scroll back through uh, your research what, uh, how, you can, how you can do it. Typically, it, uh, human thinking goes another way, but when you put it in writing, you may uh, uh, pretend that you go from applications to your research procedure. So, um, you were selecting one or another project, right? So it was election. 
no one was uh, uh, twisted arms to do one or another. It was all volunteer. The, it means that uh, your brains and hearts are leaning us towards a specific project. So you may see some benefit, maybe for yourself personally. Maybe you see how your project will save uh, humankind. Maybe you, uh, you see uh, what uh, are, which scientific challenges it will address. And, uh, and you may see which expected results you're going to get in order to fulfill these goals. So if you can, without if, you have to write it explicitly. But if you have formulated this idea for yourself, it can be your compass towards including or not including specific results into your, into your paper. So you are putting on a scale, like this orbital, does it make humankind happier? Does it save human? No, okay, throw it away. Oh, no, this orbital is really saves everyone. We, we should put it. Uh, an example is like if you um, oversimplified, you do much more complicated. If you are looking on uh, oxygen, O2, and you are doing uh, spin polarized calculations, you, um, you will s the, the, the person who would try to do it will immediately see that uh, oxygen uh, um, can exist, can set an up down to different values, but only for value. Uh, 2, which corresponds to 2 unpaired electrons, triplet. Total energy will be minimal. But if one uh, puts oxygen into singlet, no unpaired electrons, all electron paired, total energy will be higher up, by the way, 4 electron volts. And uh, this, I'm ending this example. It will be very short. Do, do not think that I want to torture anyone with uh, long stories. Singlet oxygen which is unnatural, is excited by some reason. And if you create singlet oxygen, it is an agent that uh, kill uh, bacteria or malignant tissues. And this is a way how some of the branches of chemotherapy works. So if you are studying uh, singlet versus triplet oxygen, you are saving um, a lot of people and you help those researchers who find ways to fight cancer. Right? So it is an example, but you may set up a logical path to sell your research as the most important thing without which uh, all civilization will collapse. Right? Without plastic bottles, we will not have our drinks. <laughs> you can put it as a title. Um, okay, so this is another handout, right? I, I like this a lot. Oh, nice. Thank you. It, it's oversimplified, but uh, if you like, I'm, I'm pleased. Well, if there is, there, um, I do not take credit for it. It's a standard thing. When uh, all of us are writing research papers, and especially short papers, there is a convention in the research community uh, to organize. We have two different of uh, several different organizations. We organize data, organize figures, and now we organize written text. So there are uh, standard practices to organize text to help the reader. So one often uh, has the four sections: introduction, method, results, plus discussion, and conclusions. Right. And um, it's not mandatory. You can uh, do your freestyle writing, but chances of acceptance will be substantially lower if you're looking for uh, real journals. So if you follow the template, uh, it will be easier to digest by uh, reviewer, by editor, and easier getting to the stage of publication. I I want to explain something really simple that it seems evident, but I, I better verbalize it. So if you are in this class, it means that your uh, career is related to natural sciences in some way, right? And it may 
not necessarily, but it may mean that you just enjoy a uh, process of learning something new or like making little real experiments or uh, intellectual experiments or computational experiments and you get satisfaction and reward just of the process. But in order to survive and keep doing this and getting this reward again and again, we need to confirm to the rest of the world that you are the best in this activity. And standard, standard way to prove it is to make your written reports published by independent uh, uh, publishers. And uh, the procedure relates to ancient times and background of uh, of the civilization of the like uh, our civilization today rests on several like seeds and sources, but part of civilization based on Greek and Roman uh, ancient times. And there was an interesting concept, interesting idea at this times. It's, a, a, I will say, a sentence that Ben and Gage didn't hear before. It's the only sentence that I had compared to the last half a year. So, in ancient and Roman civilization, compared to uh, near neighbors on the map, whatever, 3,000 years ago, there was a concept or seeds of a concept of uh, individual freedom. Individual freedom in a sense that uh, a listener of your ideas has rights to accept or, or reject the uh, ideas or um, sets of facts or their analysis that you are offering. So uh, basically, I am... Uh, telling, would you stay for another two hours in the lecture room, me? And he has a right to say no, right? I'm not, I'm, I'm not <laughs> going to ask this. Uh, so the same idea, this, uh, there is a connection to this idea in scientific community. The editor of journal has freedom, has a right to accept or reject your paper. We do not, we cannot bribe the editor. We cannot uh, threaten the editor. We cannot <laughs> twist the arms, right? We need to convince. We need to give arguments that the editor will con consider as convincing enough that this paper is strong enough to be published. And sometimes, uh, most of the times, editors are too busy, so they do, do not evaluate papers themselves. They delegate these rights to reviewers. And reviewers are typically chosen from the peers, from the people, from the same group of people who are submitting submitting papers. And uh, the goal of the writing, well, not the overall goal. Overall goal is either to make uh, to save the humankind or satisfy your intellectual curiosity, right? But cynical goal, practical, little goal, after your research is, is done, is to convince editor and reviewers, who are free people, that the paper is strong enough. So uh, the way to uh, organize your writing in a specific format is a little step towards going through this uh, freedom to uh, win their opinion onto your side. So, why system is interesting? Reference, and typically we do references, right? Identify open problem for the system. So, um, when you are going to save humankind or when you are going to satisfy your own curiosity, you can formulate your activity as an attempt to answer one or another question. Sometimes you derive this question only after research is done. But for the reader, it's much better if you put this question right up front. So it's, it's completely okay to design question after it has been answered and just make a little intrigue. Then, again, it's more like writing detective story or just, uh, <gasps> look what I have, attracting attention. Right? 
So um, you can immediately offer hypothetical answer. So most, again, it's very, very different in each situation, but you tell, here is my question I'm trying to address, and most likely uh, this question has this answer based on uh, scientific intuition and what others are writing in their papers. And then the whole paper that is set up at the introduction stage can be formulated, logically organized. I'm talking about writing, not about data, which should be done by, by the time you're, you're writing. So the whole paper can, can be organized as finding evidences towards proving your hypothetical answer right or wrong. So same like uh, theorems in calculus. Typically in standard education of calculus, uh, it's not like skills. It is more like a set of theorems, and they are first declared and they proved. Um, a lot of people hate math and have, hate theorems, but it is like standard way to communicate information. Instead of keeping uh, here are all my technical data, guess what? Guess why I did it? And here is the question. Here is the answer. It's a little irritating for a reader. And if you put uh, this important information up front, it is so much easier to get through. So it is your creative uh, assignment to wrap up your mind around your project. Formulate question, formulate hypothetical answer, and tell how your computations will prove or disprove uh, this hypothetical answer. Again, you are not making a fantasy without any background. By, this, by the time you are writing, you likely have all results. But now you are doing a little hints how to organize presentation of results in a, in a better way for uh, readers. Methods. Ideally, um, there is an idea in, in community that any researcher, so qualified enough researcher who reads your paper can reproduce your results. <coughs> so the results are so true that if uh, a reader repeats procedure, like mix, so many TNT and hammers uh, with so heavy hammer on it, it, it will be so much explosion, right? Procedure. Or if one solves a uh, quantum equation with this basis set, one will get this, uh, this function, one will get so much of total energy. So the goal is to uh, ideally to help reader to reproduce your results or um, if you are living in a practical and scenic way, at least to look as if they want to help reader to produce results. So uh, either because it is not possible, or some um, it, it's very bad practice. But it, it uh, some, sometimes uh, some people uh, uh, do not want competitors to see all uh, secrets. Do not do it. Just be aware that it is possible to uh, to do as it looks like all complete information, but some important parts I, I missed. And as reviewers, you, will, you should find such uh, uh, missing parts. Send me reminders, I will be happy to share some templates for methods. Yes? OK, so I want to make sure I understand this like hypothetic um, answer sort of thing right. So I, from what I understand from my research, my hypothetic answer would be, I guess, PBTE uh, nanowires uh, would work uh, really, really well in uh, high temperature uh, computing environments. And my results would either like prove or disprove that uh, hypothesis. Am I right? Um, for for your specific uh, project, you need to formulate more detailed, more tiny, more narrow, narrow question. Okay. Uh, for example, if you do have uh, P and N doped, uh, you can uh, uh, ask uh, whether the doping view um, attract electrons and holes to doped sites. Okay. 
I'm not telling that this is a very right uh, question, but uh, try to think and, and form, formulate uh, the, a little more narrow question. So you, you can have several layers. One layer is uh, how to make humankind happy, and another more specific uh, research question that uh, is addressable. Results and discussion. So, I'm going to tell something oversimplified and not uh, not ideal, but uh, what what uh, some people do when uh, time is really limited. So, you throw in figures, and all, by the way, each figure should have captions. It's like standard practice, but you throw in all figures and captions in your Word file, or if some of you are really big fans of LaTeX, I, I don't care. Um, and then you are putting your research uh, results section, and you write, Geometry of model is presented in, in figure one. Density of states is presented in figure two. Absorption spectra are presented in figure three. And snapshots of molecular dynamics are presented in figure four. Done. <laughs> I'm going to the next section. Well, it is an exaggerated way, but uh, in some sense, uh, uh, so it is the lowest level. Next level, uh, when people copy paste captions, and there is a paragraph about each figure, and you just uh, um, do a kid's song. I am singing of what I'm seeing. Like, on, on this figure, I do see green and red blobs, and they stand far away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, and um, probably you can, you can but, but there are ways to do a little upscale sophistication, but we all are um, under pressure of time. I have a question. Please. Um, is there like an absolute point we should just not stop? We should not be running anything at this point. We should just be solely doing analysis. Because I wanted to include one thing, but I'm concerned about time in mine. So just kind of go with what we have right now and just kind of analyze, get everything put together and just write it up kind of thing. It is. Can you talk about what, how it would have been, the thing you wanted to produce, how it would have been beneficial? Can you incorporate that in there as like a little discussion oh, point? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, it is your free choice, but uh, I would focus on writing rather than publishing data. Also, as, as you already know from uh, your computational experience, uh, the main beauty of computational uh, chemistry is that you submit 100 jobs and go to the pub. Well, <laughs> yeah. right? Or lay on the sofa and watch TV. Have a nap. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, or uh, submit 100 jobs and start writing. And then if, if they're done, you can add something later, right? So writing right now is the focus. But uh, since uh, submitting of jobs is, is not a uh, really big amount of uh, time and effort, feel free. OK. There are still some uh, hours left in the repository. There is no goal to burn all, all hours. They are for a uh, group of researchers until the end of the year. And right now, uh, hours have been spent a little quicker. But feel free to use. It's, it's a right use of resources. Uh, yes? This is a hypothetic answers and hypothetic questions, no? Hmm? This hypothetic answers and the question, no? In the introduction uh, section. Uh -huh. So that's a general format in a paper, right? The scope and objective. No? Mm -hmm. It's same. Yes. More or less same. Yes. Oh. So 
green and red blobs are far from each other because my system has done a or and, and one is oxidizing and another is reducing. So explain why. If, if you can, if you have time, if you have steam, we, we all live in practical world, world and it is clear that uh, one kind of ideals are not uh, always possible. How the bird turns into the owl or the owl turns into the bird? Um, you, you manage your time and uh, you may have some other courses so you, you are not 24 hours invest, investment on uh, writing. So, <laughs> so uh, conclusions. Why conclusions are needed? You don't want to leave your reader hanging. You want to conclude, again, why it was important and what you learned from it. Some irresponsible readers, some irresponsible reviewers do not read the papers. They immediately jump to conclusions. <laughs> it, it's not a secret. And um, reviewers are mandated by editors to write re re review reports. And in review report, um, there are s several sections that reviewers are the twisted arms to, to do it. And they need to summarize what paper is about. Do you think uh, reviewers have time to read and formulate their own thoughts? They better copy-paste uh, from, from the author. Wait, do they need the abstract? That's the first thing. Uh, well, um, it, it's not long to wait until you will be a formal reviewer. Well, uh, mock reviewing se section will be on Tuesday, and uh, in your career you will start reviewing true papers like in a couple of years. And, and uh, you ask yourself how... Uh, it's not like... Uh, level of responsibility of a person. It's it's a uh, level of uh, how much free time you have. Mm -hmm. There are deadlines, uh, there are a thousand other things and uh, under this pressure reviewer is always uh, often goes to conclusions and just uh, borrows some formulation from them. So when you're writing conclusions you're putting your words into mouth of reviewer. All right. Ready? Yes? Can I add a point? Um, I don't know who said this to me in my undergrad. I just learned it in one of my classes or research combination. Abstract first, conclusions, results, methods, and that's kind of the general order you go in. Some people look at the methods first, then results just depends on what you're looking for. All right. So that's, yeah, you don't ever want to read it like a book. You're going to go right to sleep. You're looking for key points and key results from the figures. The figures are going to be your talking point. Okay. Or learning, rather, learning points. So, um, you are formulating your conclusions in the following way. Hallelujah. <laughs> All data supports my hypothetical answer. What a, what a surprise. I was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's uh, a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, you also may want to convince a uh, reader that uh, uh, results are available for someone else except yourself. Basically, it, 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 it correlates with introduction. Um, I am the poorest possible writer, and at the beginning of my graduate school, I wrote a draft thing, brought to advisor, and he told, I do not like your conclusions. We do. <laughs> and I came uh, 15 minutes after and brought uh, a new version. And how, what did you... <laughs> no, you cannot do so. You just swapped conclusions and <laughs> abstracts. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you, you may... Um, tells that you trust your results and others should trust because uh, it was so upscale method, best of the best used. Or if it was, was not best of the best, it was your system was so big and not, nothing else other than your method was working here. Um, reference, references, because we uh, are standing on the shoulders of giants and we are not contradicting to overall stream of the of the science. If you want to contradict, you, you, you need to prove and you still need to refer to others and tell this one was wrong because of that, this one was wrong because of that. But typically it goes like a pyramid, you are standing on 
previous uh, generations. So, and discussion is uh, anticipating that not every reviewer, not every reader will agree with what you are writing, and you may have an idea uh, what your reviewer is not happy about, and uh, make a safety cushion. Answer the possibly aggressive question ahead of time. So, you may not believe that I took the best function, but uh, it gave the right gap. <laughs> <laughs> See, Queen, you're all agreeing. Mm. So, uh, were this um, splitting of your writing materials came from? So, I hope it is a favorite part of uh, Ben. And I will use uh, your help again. <clears throat> Would you like to teach the whole section again? Or gauge? Okay. But um, I, I definitely will need your help in pronunciation. So, the idea of communicating um, some amount of information to other people is not new, right? And the amount of public speeches or public writing uh, is not new. It exists for like several thousand years. And uh, there are... Um, it's maybe one of the most ancient branches of uh, human intellectual activities. The rules how to organize your uh, thoughts in writing or in speech so that uh, it will find way to the hearts of your re reviewers. And reviewers in scientific communities is reviewers of papers, but it could be judge on your trial uh, or a person whom you want to uh, sell your house or whatever. So again, assuming that everyone is free, can accept or reject your suggestion, you need to give some argument that would be convincing. And uh, the, there are two well, more than two, but there are two streams in uh, thinking about this conversation procedure. One is more Greek school, another originates from Roman. So in Greek school, um, they are more philosophical, I think, how the creation of your uh, written project or, or um, product or oral product goes on, and they split it onto like uh, designing the actual. Uh, materials and logically connecting them uh, and then designing uh, how you will present and specifically how you will align in which order you will align your uh, pieces of information how you chop parts of uh, how you chop everything you think about this uh, subject uh, in the best possible order so uh, what we did so on the previous slide and this um, handout is how the information, how your thoughts are chopped on this uh, introduction, methods, results, conclusion. And um, then today we do not care how to deliver and how to memorize because we have computers and uh, there is a printing technology for the last uh, like seven, six hundred years. <coughs> But for uh, people in 3,000 years ago, they designed uh, public speech and then memorized it each time. So, goal of each uh, intellectual product, either speech or writing, is delectare, uh, docere, mowere. Uh, so, uh, to you know how to say that. I took four years of Latin in high school. Oh. <laughs> so, in order to take, it is a prerequisite for computational chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot take it without Latin. Uh, so, um, your product, in, in our case it is uh, written reports, should please the reader, or ent uh, like entertain reader, should uh, give something new, and should uh, urge to move, should uh, 
inspire reader to do something. So uh, under inspire reader to do something, it's very clear. You need to inspire reviewer to write that it is best paper I ever saw, and they recommend it for immediate publication in current form without any changes. And uh, Cicero, uh, one of the um, famous speakers who designed public speeches, uh, left some notes how to split thoughts on, uh, in the best way to, uh, that they would digest by public. So what we do is inherited from here with some uh, changes to academic nature of our activity and with some simplifications of the modern uh, world. So the uh, first one, ex oedium, which uh, um, corresponds to part of our introduction or, or the um, abstract that basically tells the idea of uh, saving the world, explaining how your project will save the world. The uh, uh, second one, narratio, is um, um, given some references if other people were, were doing something. Um, and uh, the third part, partitio, um, is um, often included in long scientific papers when at the end of the introduction section you tell how the rest of the paper is organized. Or if you are more to the book style rather than short paper, you have just table of contents. So you help reader to navigate through the rest of the material. Um. <clears throat> Confirmatio. So this it, it, it uh, is combination of uh, methods and uh, results. In the ancient styles, there were no computers. Amount of facts and amount of proofs was less, and it was more accent on uh, ways why you do it and what you get out of it. In our modern world, we get less and less uh, introductory and concluding part, and we mm, get more and more on the actual facts and, and their analysis. But here is uh, when you confirm your hypothetical idea that it was right. So, and uh, also here you include your methods. So you confirm that uh, uh, you save the world, that your uh, answer to your hypothetical answer is correct. So all evidences that tell that your case is winning. So this, by now, this also is part, in short papers, it's part of the results and discussion. In longer papers, there are separate section discussion where uh, you anticipate that a uh, reviewer as a free person may or may not agree with you. You anticipate uh, in which aspects reviewer will be not agreeing with you, and uh, you are trying to provide, uh, to make safety caution, to provide some arguments against possible aggressive questions. Um, we are not babies. <laughs> we can think a couple of steps forward. And you, uh, it, it doesn't take special, you do not need to like, sit in the uh, sealed room for, uh, for a month to predict what a reviewer will ask. You, you, you can, you see your big places yourself and you, you understand yourself why it is missed. And you can tell like, okay, I um, never included spin polarization, but uh, you, reviewer, have never seen organic polymers with magnetic properties, right? And it, it, it will, uh, like, reviewer may ask why the uh, N up down key was not more, uh, used, why the magnetic properties of my system were not explored. But uh, through all literature uh, I read, there is the magnetic organic polymers are not uh, very popular, and my material is not magnetic. So, yeah, enough. 
Okay. Um, Harold Matteo. So it is a conclusion. So uh, I like uh, this is taken just from Wikipedia. Uh, so I'm I'm doing poor job of uh, telling in public this excellent help of, of Ben of what I just read in, in Wikipedia. But uh, it um, as we agreed, it concludes that your hypothetical answer is correct. It tells that it is valuable. And then you use some argument, and uh, then you <laughs> cast or blame anyone who uh, disagree with your results, and uh, you um, arouse sympathy for the author client of the case. Question. Yes. Are you comfortable with the R word down there? Hmm? Are you comfortable with the R word down there? Which, which in word? the link, in the Wikipedia link. Rhetoric. Rhetoric. That's just an English word. Oh. No, no, no. I mean, like, do you feel comfortable with the pronunciation of that one? Um, how do you pronounce it? Rhetoric. Rhetoric. Right. Okay. Rhetoric. Rhetoric. How, how are you? How are you thinking of pronouncing? I never pronounced. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Rhetoric. Would that be a special kind of like, does that have a base kind of? But it is Greek, it's not Latin. It's Greek. Yeah, yeah. okay. It's Greek. RH doesn't Greek. appear in Latin. Okay. Um, there are different ways to pronounce uh, ancient uh, Greek uh, writings. So the original way how they were pronouncing is, is completely lost. So modern Greeks uh, pronounce it different way. Mm. Uh, and. Um, there were, were medieval European thinkers who redesigned the way how to pronounce, but they swapped several vowels, and uh, like the vowel that uh, are in original by some sources is pronounced like uh, like sound e, is not pronounced like e, mm. and uh, what whatever we try to make out of Greek uh, writings is uh, not how it originally sounded. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ben. Okay, almost done. So, you have all ideas, well, which I can communicate. Maybe there are more ideas uh, how to wrap up uh, your reports. And um, I'm not going to keep the intrigue. Here are the questions that you will answer by reading works of your classmates on Tuesday. So, um, if you would, uh, this time all of you will become actual reviewers for big journals, and then uh, you answer, like, publish after major revision, uh, after, or minor revision, reject or publish as is. And as author, you fight for publish as is. And um, as objective reviewer, you do not have goal. You just objectively evaluate. Some people are unhappy through their life, and they try to reject everything. But it's it's minor. It's not typical. So really, we should probably scratch out reject. Would we reject our peers? You can. Because um, that seems well, a bit harsh. I mean. Well, um, in. Um, Reviewers are typically blind, so uh, you do yeah, not you do not write who who is uh, the reviewer. Um, so, um, idea that uh, could be helpful for final for, for for writing great paper is understanding that things that you are writing is not a standalone thing. It is a it is a piece that will be read by your classmates or by someone else. And if, as a reviewer, re you read this material, you should be able to summarize how you see what this work is about. What's the main idea? So, on Tuesday, you will try to dig out and uh, solve this puzzle, what, what is actually done by the work you are reviewing. During the weekend, while writing, you are trying to write in such a way that anyone who reads can easily decompose your writing and, and uh, find what is the main idea. And there is nothing wrong uh, to 
um, highlighted in the explicit way. You, you write somewhere. The main idea is, and, and just help a reviewer to copy paste it. Some other things are, uh, there, there are like technical things. Uh, title, author, address. Oh, why title, author, and address? I was reading a little bit more in the Wikipedia about this ancient rhetoric. And there, um, I, I'm just sharing it, it's not uh, very relevant here. Um, the modern mass media are not part of the rhetoric. Because in mass media, uh, there is no single author with a team, and there is no responsibility. But in the um, ancient rhetoric and anything, any parts of activity that um, inherited from them, uh, author carries personal responsibility for the content, for the style, and uh, these questions, therefore, there is an author written. And these uh, things become uh, developed a lot during the medieval times, where a lot of public speeches were on the theology of things. And uh, in case you say something wrong, there was an inquisition. And it developed a culture of being very responsible for whatever you write. Uh, I don't know if you find it funny. <laughs> But uh, so try to uh, put your uh, names. Uh, so do you, as a reviewer, do you see big picture uh, why this paper is important? Uh, do author, uh, does author motivate interest? Other references. Other, uh, and then reviewer should be able to uh, list challenges that author is offering. So the answer to which author provides hypothetical, uh, the, the question that author is providing hypothetical answer. So as reviewers, you'll try to see if this part is, is there. Okay. Uh, the idea about hypothesis driven, uh, I'm not taking credit for it. And even Sizer doesn't take credit for it. National Science Foundation takes credit for it. They, uh, while reviewing proposals, they are demanding that anything that is proposed for funding is hypothesis driven. So the structure of providing hypothesis and hypothetical answer is a uh, uh, standard custom in the academic environment. Um, which audience does it target? You can, you can if you do not like, you can t tell like, it is too sophisticated, it's only for uh, experts or it's too simple, it's for kindergarten. Or uh, information is not sufficient, I don't know who needs it. <laughs> for figures, um, um, a lot of you are very experienced in uh, making uh, scientific um, information, products, figures, data. But um, when it was an introductory stage, it was a typical thing to uh, not to care about line thickness. And when it is um, printed or reproduced with a reduction of size, thin lines disappear. And uh, of course, your paper will not be rejected by a big journal of the quality, but uh, you can get a little reprimand for uh, um, quality. So try to make ugly, exaggerated thickness of all symbols so that uh, they will be seen even after reduction in 10 times or whatever. Um, just explaining what lines are coding by dots and dashes. Other labels on the panels. Other captions in figures. Other figures that are unclear. And I'm sure because we have time pressure, uh, some of us will forget to put captions or they will be unreadable and we'll come back to it uh, during this uh, reviewing procedure. Um, so the goal of um, today's meeting, which uh, I'm not giving as an example of a uh, very organized thing, but it focused on some items that you need to make an effort to logically organize. So, when you will read together, you may 
judge whether you see logical organization in several uh, rubrics. And as a uh, reviewer also has a right to give suggestions how the paper can be improved. And uh, one of the uh, typical uh, suggestions is like swap sections, which may help uh, with the understanding. Through the years of this course, um, it's always under pressure, and uh, it, it's not rare to see uh, in these reviews, like, ah, oh, conclusions we present and the answers. I do not see conclusions in this paper. Because of time pressure, not, of, not all of us have time to complete them, but uh, as a um, reviewer, you may make your comments. Other challenge hypothesis as I addressed. Uh, work conclusion supported. In science, it is a big benefit if a uh, paper communicates new knowledge. So it is, even if it doesn't save uh, humankind, you can tell uh, there are some meticulous screen for new knowledge, and finally, this thing was not known before. This is also uh, enough, good enough for accepting it. And here, the best answer is, I'm jealous. I, why didn't I do the same project? I like it so much, it's so interesting. So uh, you, some of you may write it in such a way that the reader will think that it is uh, really nice. Inspires future direction. So it is your question. If you do not have uh, time, but you may mention it in, uh, in the paper and the reviewer will uh, see it so that there are directions for future research which is also considered as a, as a benefit. And benefits of general public, we already discussed it. Results we will present it, supported by data. Elementary process are illustrated. Quality of illustration is perfect. All figures are explained and there are no complaints. Um, you should feel bored and tired by this, by this time, right? We are, we are finishing uh, very soon. So um, in methods, please try to include equations. Send me emails if you need templates. I'll try to, to send. Um, the goal of the methods to that the reader can reproduce the results. And if you appeal to the community of uh, computational chemists, you we discussed it. And Kurt taught me a special uh, collegial word, but I already forgotten it. No? So um, military aircrafts. Fighters oh. from different countries okay. meet in the uh, gray territory. So it's all very computerized. Yeah, I, I, this will be not direct <laughs> connection, I thought, but you will see, you will see connection. And um, there is a very short time, shorter than the human brain can operate, to identify whether it is uh, friend or find, whether to launch. Uh, defense systems or just uh, coordinate and uh, fly together. So there are uh, like Wi-Fi passwords that identify is it uh, on the uh, ally side or, or enemy side. And this Wi-Fi passwords are, are not very complicated. It mean, mean they need to be, com uh, in all ancient times, it was just banners by the troops. You see the right color. Um, you, nowadays it is uh, similar well, it's not little Wi-Fi, but it's radio signal to identify. So, if you are submitting a journal in the community of people of other computational chemists, you need to send a Wi-Fi signal that you belong to this group. So, if you do not include uh, equations, if you are not telling in the standard format, like in order to get these results, we solve this equation by this software. Um, you may get a wrong signal and you will be considered as a foreigner in this community. Please. So basically, in other words, include all the famous people that have 
led us to do what we've done, essentially? Well, in this short report, there is no time to do yeah. everything, but not people show equations. Well, they, they, they were you know, like, for example, heart rate fog, you know, like... Uh, if you're not solving heart rate fog equation, you do not need to show. Well, yeah, but if you were... But, um, uh, so the logic is, <clears throat> suppose that your reader doesn't have a license, doesn't, didn't have funds to purchase a license for a specific software, but your reader wants to reproduce results. Any software that is being run is, even at our sophisticated days, can be written with less than half a year. If you quote write equations, a smart person can recode the software and gain the same results. So you need to provide enough information and uh, uh, try to include equations. Again, it's not super mandatory, but it's highly recommended. Yeah. yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Um, and if there are no equations, tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, on Tuesday, if you see no equations, you can complain. <laughs> There are no equations in this uh, paper. So, I have problems myself explaining this uh, often, but uh, visitors to your presentations likely will answer this. So you may start thinking why this method versus another one. Methods are very trustable. I do not need anything else, I can reproduce results. Thank you for your questions. Wishing you inspiration, uh, enlightenment, good luck, um, coffee. <laughs> so please bring printed copies on Tuesday. I see. Uh, Are you going back to share? Uh, Probably first. We can go to my office now. I don't have a card. Oh, okay. Everyone needs a red. Two sample booklets. I know. I have them. Oh, those? Maybe someone took them. But I have a couple of copies more in the office. And I also can. You can uh, share it. Uh, like, if you need one, you can take it with you. If anyone else needs. I was not intending to bring it back. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. And I can share electronic form of this as well. Are you walking back to the. No, I'm going no. to the chat. Oh. Oh, I can check. No. <sighs> I have one slide done. Shortly. Four.